Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, you know, eight students have joined. Okay, so I hope all of you remember the concepts of waves that we have revised in last class or last week. Okay, right? Okay. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, Abhin. Good morning, Kalpana. Morning, Harsha. Morning, Manoj. Morning, Radhika. Morning, Sanjana. Dilip. Swamik. Okay, Shreya. So uh, before starting, so I hope all of you have studied this chapter recently, wave optics. Uh, I guess it's completed in October, right? September end in October. So you must be remembering a bit about about this chapter, right, everyone? Batao. Yes. Okay. Now, when we start about this chapter, when you talk about this chapter, right? What are the topics that pops up in your head? Tell me. What are the topics that pops up in your head? Right. अगर मैं तुमको बोलूं कि इस चैप्टर को डिवाइड करना है, right? तो कितने पार्ट में डिवाइड करोगे? Okay. Yes. YDSC. Okay. So I can say that it usually it is divided into three parts. Okay. Right. Interference, diffraction, and polarization. Yes or no? Interference, diffraction, and polarization. These three parts. Right. just break it down right break down this topic okay let's let's break down this topic so i can say that right wave optics okay optics is divided into three parts okay and see focus we will focus on the concepts that is important jahan se questions aate hain okay so first is interference interference right then diffraction and polarization now when you talk about polarization so polarization is just theory right hame bas theory padhna hai hame aur kuch zyada nahi padhna hai hai ki nahi right hame bas theory padhna hai aur ek ek chhota sa equation hai brewster angle ka that's it yes agree right now when you talk about diffraction and interference yahan pe hame most of the questions isse puchte hain most of the questions interference and diffraction se hi aate hain okay wait i'll just turn on my video so that it will it will be better for me right agar tum log mujhe koi turn kar do like uh, videos to better rahega i'll feel like i'm teaching someone <laughs> okay right harsha manoj swamik you can if if your internet is good you can turn on your uh, vi video right it will have better feeling for me theek okay. hai so when you talk about this interference right just talk about this interference so if you further break down this if you further break down this okay i'm not talking about wide dsc or lloyds or fresnel right just forget about this i just know that okay in this we have two things right constructive and destructive constructive and destructive right everyone and same with diffraction constructive and destruct destructive now if we remember the concept that we have studied in waves right that when you talk about interference it is a one kind of superposition yes or no it is a kind of superposition right and in when we talk about waves you have discussed what is what is path difference what is phase difference okay so we will further understand the concepts of those path difference and phase difference in this interference right okay now before starting before starting interference we have some basic theories right let's see what are those basic theories okay right think about it what are those basic theories so they are basically the theories related to light right what is wave what is wave front right what are the different theories in which light is defined i hope all of you are aware right that newton's first law uh, again i always uh, have a difficulty in spelling this word right popular theory right okay then Uh, your hydrogen theory then your duality right so those are the theories that we have already discussed so i'm not going to discuss all those things okay right i'll share this notes uh, with you guys i'll share this on google classroom okay so these are the different theories then we have each theory detailed which is basically just a theory you have to go through this okay now 
when you talk about the first concept that we studied the first concept was of wave front right what is wave front what is secondary wave front right how the intensity is uh depending on the distance depending on the shape of the wave front right this is the first concept that we studied okay now if you remember if you remember that when you talk about the source right source can either be point source or line source right now when we talk about point source so point source have a circular wave front right so think about this point source have a circular wave front now each and every point on that wave front can act as a secondary source right and again it will create your wave front right now if you yes so if you talk about this if you talk about each and every point on this okay so these points will act as your secondary source and will create their own yes right yes wavelets and they will create their own wave fronts which is a secondary wave front yes or no tell me yes or no right okay yes now if we imagine if we imagine these wave fronts so i can say that okay at some point of time at some distance they will uh, superimpose right they will superimpose so i can say that okay if they are superimposing right so position can be take off uh, take by two methods either constructive or destructive so they can either combine and add up or they can get subtracted yes or no tell me yes or no tell me yes or no right and this is the basic yes this is the basic fundamental concept which we are going to study in interference okay right this is the basic fundamental concept that we are going to study in interference now when you talk about the different type of wave fronts so it depends on the type of source right let's see this table i hope all of you can see this table so when i'm having spherical wave front it is due to point source and the amplitude is inversely proportional to distance or radius right and intensity is inversely proportional to tell me intensity is inversely proportional to distance square right makes sense because it is yes now when you talk about cylindrical okay when you talk about cylindrical so you might remember these concepts because this is the concept that is used okay now when you talk about cylindrical i can say that the amplitude is directly proportional sorry indirectly proportional to square root of distance and intensity is always directly proportional to a square i hope all of you remember so you just have to remember what is the relation between the distance and amplitude you don't have to remember the intensity because i is always directly proportional to right a square yes or no tell me i hope all of you remember from the waves okay now when you talk about plane plane right plane is again constant everything is constant okay right so there are some properties of wave front which is again theory i hope all of you remember this right go through that once we will be uh, covering only the conceptual part not the theoretical part now when you talk about interference so my question is what what do you understand by interference what is interference so interference is nothing but superposition of light right interference is nothing but superposition of light makes sense yes or no right now when you talk about interference when i talk about interference so i can say that they might have a uh, same phase they might have different phase right the phase difference might differ by pi or anything okay and depending on that depending on that when you talk about the superimposed right superimposed wave right it may be of greater strength or diminished strength okay got it right or i'm talking about the intensity in terms of intensity it may be added or subtracted now when it is added it is called as constructive interference so if you recall the concept that we studied in waves so i can say that if two waves are in same phase having same frequency okay right then they will be superimposed in constructive way the intensity will be the sum of intensities yes or no tell me right i is equal to root i1 plus root i2 whole square yes or no how many of you remember this right yes okay so when you talk about interference of light right let's see interference of light so i can say that okay same frequency when the two lights of same frequency with zero initial phase difference initial phase difference is zero right or constant phase difference superimpose on each other superimpose on each other right the resultant amplitude as well as intensity changes okay right and how does it change right if 
the intensity resulting intensity is greater than the sum of the two okay right then it is constructive it is less than it is destructive okay that is the basic theory now when you talk about source i have told you right that it should have same frequency and by same frequency i mean they should be coherent okay coherent so when you talk about the type of sources right they should be coherent source what's the meaning of coherent source it means they will have same wavelength and same frequency right got it or same phase or constant phase difference make sense tell me make sense yes or no and these are the initial conditions right these are the initial conditions when i'm talking about phase difference it is the initial phase difference okay right now what does what does we mean by interference so obviously if we have interference right we talk about two different waves yes or no two different light waves i'm just talking about two different right rays for example here uh, i'm just talking about two different right light rays which should have same frequency and a constant phase difference so the general way the general way of doing this is to have a same source okay same source same light source and to split to split the light of that same source into two parts yes or no tell me yes or no right again right there may be different there will be superposition right there will be superposition but there may be different intensities it not be it should not be just i1 plus i2 and obviously when you talk about higher grades right when you talk about engineering and uh, light at higher levels right this chapter at higher levels there will be interference of uh, non coherent source right but we cannot calculate it in a easier way as simple as that okay so this is our limitation our syllabus limitation that we are studying coherent source okay got it because when you talk about superimposition right just think about it now we have studied in waves that even if we have two different velocity uh, frequencies the waves will superimpose yes or no tell me yes or no right we have studied one equation also right standing wave is basically example of superimposed uh, frequencies yes yes beat frequency and all those things but that will make the situation complex so we won't be discussing about that okay So yeah, uh, yeah. So these are the methods to find a coherent source. Okay. Now, suppose we get a coherent source. So there are multiple methods, right? So first is your YDSC that we have studied, and this is something that we will be studying throughout the class. YDSC. Okay. YDSC. Second is Lloyd mirror. Okay. Lloyd mirror. We are using two different mirrors. Okay. Source. Now, third is Fresnel prism. So we won't be studying Lloyd and Fresnel by prism. Okay, we won't be studying Lloyd and Fresnel by prism. We'll be studying just YDSC. Okay, right now, I hope all of you are aware of the basic equation of waves because this will be same. This will be same for both uh, your normal wave as well as light wave. Right? What was the equation of displacement? Tell me, guys. What is the equation? X is equal to. Tell me. Or Y is equal to a. Tell me sine. Omega t plus minus k x, right? Plus pi or just omega t plus pi if x is same, yes or no? Okay, very good, right? Now, yes, very good. So we will discuss y d s c. Now, if you see this structure, I hope all of you can see the y d s c. So what we do here is we have a source, right? We have a light source, right? One source, and this source is divided into two parts. so we have one setup or one screen kind of thing which have two tiny holes two tiny holes right and the same light right the same light will go through these two holes now there is one thing when you talk about yeah slits right that's what we call right now there are different things that we can talk about right but when we talk about the basic problems so we assume that light source light source is kept Here, right? Light source is kept over here, which means there is no path difference between S one and S two. Okay, right? But when you talk about different type of a difficult problem, I can have a path difference between S one and S two. Yes or no? Right? So that's your concept. Okay. So usually we keep the source in perpendicular bisector of S one and S two, so that till S one and S two we don't have any path difference. Okay, right? Okay. now 
when we talk about just think about this when you talk about the light source okay when you talk about the light source wait I'll just try to okay now it is clearly visible it is clearly visible that the path traveled by s1 to p and s2 by s2 by p right this 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 is just one ray this is just one ray right it might be different rays because these will form wave fronts now so we just join a straight line we just join the wave fronts which is uh, basically your superimposing and make it as a ray okay so they might meet any place right i'm just taking one example i'm just taking one general ray okay now when we talk about the path covered by s1 p and s2 p so this is clearly visible that the path is not same right the path is not same the path is different yes or no right so i can say that okay we will get a path difference because of this arrangement we will get a path difference of delta x right we get a path difference of delta x and this this path difference will leads to phase difference yes or no this path difference will leads to delta phi phase difference right and this phase difference will leads to the different kind of superposition i'm just using the word superposition because we have already studied in waves that if two waves are superimposing in same phase right right they'll add up which is a constructive right if they are adding in opposite phase they'll get subtracted right so and we don't have to remember we don't have to mug up any formula we just have to know the basic right concepts okay so this is the very basic concept that we all have studied about ydsc now let's see the different cases okay and we know that this is just one case this is just this is just one case right there may be different rays meeting at different points so this p point is variable it's not fixed this is variable okay we have different uh superposition at each and every point and this p is a screen we can get different kind of spectrum or different kind of uh, intensities on this right wait yeah yeah on this screen right everyone tell me yes okay now let's discuss this ydsc in detail okay let's discuss this ydsc in detail first so when you talk about interference the actual concept that we have to understand is basic path difference right basic path difference does not matter however we create that path difference but if we know the path difference we can know the phase difference agree right and when you talk about the path difference so how can we cal how can we create path difference just think about it before starting right think about how can we create this path difference tell me how can we create this path difference first by changing the path right that's what we see in ydsc by changing the path second tell me second just think about you no know, just think like a teacher right how can if you have to create a path difference what are the ways change the medium right see again increase the screen distance okay that's also one thing increase the screen distance right yes change the medium right change the medium change the optical path yes or no right so when you talk about inserting a slab or, or conducting this ydsc experiment in water right or by having a half lower level in water upper layer in uh, your air right or do whatever the only concept that you are using is by increasing the path difference using your optical path yes or no tell me yes or no right thin film interference is also by optical path difference na prashant right so if you know the concept of optical path difference right you will calculate right your actual path difference yes or no yes displacing the source means shifting it shifting it uh, either up or down from its your tell me your position which position perpendicular right bisector position yes or no yes or no right 
So these are the concepts that we have studied, right? So conceptually, it sounds very easy. Conceptually, it sounds very easy, but still we find it difficult. Still we find this topic difficult because uh, when a question is asked, we cannot figure it out what is being asked. Okay, that's one thing, right? But when talk about formula, just try to break down this topic one by one. Okay. Now let's try to break down this interference. Okay. Body is absent, but uh, okay. So this is something that we have already studied in waves. Let's recall it. We have two waves y1, y2. Okay. Now in this, as we said, right, we don't have uh, the position common because it will be same. Okay. So we have y1 as a1 sine omega t, y2 is equal to a2 sine omega t plus phi, where phi is a constant, right? So the phase difference, initial phase difference is constant, which is phi. Frequency is same. That is the condition for coherence rules that we have taken, right? If you talk about the superimposed wave, which is y is equal to y1 plus y2, I will get something like this, right? I will get something like this, okay? Now, this a1 plus a2 cos phi, this a1 plus a2 cos phi, I termed it as capital A cos phi, okay? And this a2 cos phi, this a2 cos phi is a sine phi, right? So I can write y is equal to a sine omega t cos theta and a cos omega t sine theta. Now, if you recall, this is a formula of this a sine omega t plus theta. Yes or no? Tell me. Yes or no? Right? Sine a sine b. Sorry, sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Okay? Right? Yes. What is this theta? Tell me, what is this theta? This theta is your phase angle right? Theta is your phase angle, right? Which is basically your, yes, right? A2 sine on phi by A1 plus A2 cos phi. This is what we have already studied in. Yes. Okay. Now, these are some other terms. Let, let's recall, right? That intensity is directly proportional to amplitude square, right? So when you talk about the uh, intensity, right? It is I1 plus I2, right? I1 root I1 plus I2 whole square, I max, I max, I min is I1 minus I2 whole square. The general formula is this. Okay, so these are the concepts that we have already studied, right? Okay, now think about it. When you talk about the phase difference, think about it. When you talk about the phase difference, okay, right? Phase difference. What is the phase difference over here? Right? What is the phase difference? Tell me. Phase difference is the difference in, tell me, phase, right? Angle. And what is path difference? Path difference is basically your difference in path. Okay, means suppose we have a source, right? And we consider two point A and B. Okay, the distance between these two, right? Is your delta X. Now, because of this, because of this, there'll be change in the angle, the change in phase, right? That is the delta phi, delta phi. And the relationship between this that we have already studied the relationship in K and Omega. Using the relationship in K and Omega, I hope all of you can conclude the relationship that phi is two pi by lambda into delta X, yes or no? Yes or no? Or phi is equal to two pi delta Y lambda or delta phi is equal to two pi by lambda into delta X. This is one formula which is applicable in every case. This is a very basic formula. Right everyone, tell me, right? And I hope all of you remember from where we get this, yes or no? Yes or no? Because omega t, omega t will get cancelled now, right? Okay? Yes, very good. Now, so I can say that, I can say that phase difference by 2 pi, phase difference by 2 pi, right? Phase difference by 2 pi is path difference by lambda, okay? Which is your delta t by capital T. Yes or no? Tell me, yes or no? Yes or no, right? Okay, how to use this? So we will take, so this is the basic idea. Now, before starting YDSC, before starting YDSC, let's try to talk about the phase difference. So when you talk about constructive, as I told you, the constructive is when we have, okay, guys, can you hear me properly?
Yes. Okay. Was yeah because uh, I got a call. That's why. Okay. So, okay, it's a bit low. Wait, I'll just try to leave. Is it fine now, guys? Is it fine now? Tell me, is it fine? Yes? Okay, right? So yeah, so these are things that we have already studied. Now, when you talk about constructive interference, constructive means same phase, right? Or just think about it now, right? Think about it. In case of normal wave, right? So I can say that if the wave will coincide like this, means if this phase and this phase are same, right? Then they will have, tell me, maximum intensity, the amplitude will add up, right? Okay, so this kind of interference is called as constructive interference. So can I say that, okay, so if I'm talking about the difference, the difference should always be, right? of this multiple of this path, yes or no, tell me, or this phase, yes or no. Tell me, right? And what is this phase difference? Tell me, what is this phase difference? This phase difference is nothing but multiple of two pi. Multiple of 2 pi, yes or no? So multiple of 2 pi. Yes? Agree? Right? Now, what about the path? What about the path? If you talk about the path, this is your wavelength, one whole wavelength. Right? Yes or no? So when you talk about the path, the path is multiple of lambda. Yes or no? Think what? Very basic. Yes or no? Right? Okay, very basic. So can I say that? Can I say that? Okay, if my path difference is n lambda, if my path difference is n lambda, and my phase difference is 2n pi, then I will have a constructive interference. Tell me, I'm talking about interference. I'm not talking about diffraction, by the way. I'm talking about interference. Okay? Right? Why I'm talking about interference? Because both are in same initial phase. Remember this, right? Both are in same initial phase. Basically, students generally get confused in diffraction interference, but you have to understand, right? It is basic condition, initial condition. Now think about it, now think about it. If initially, instead of this, it would be this, right? Right? Then it would be different now. Think about it, yes or no? It would be different, okay? Right? Okay? Yes. So this is your, this is your <coughs> constructive. Now, when you talk about destructive, we know that for destructive, just imagine like this. It should be like this. Okay, it should be like this. It should be mismatch, right? Mismatch. Now, what do you think? If it is mismatch, it means when it is zero to pi, right? This will be Tell me, pi to 2 pi, this should be pi to 2 pi. Yes or no, tell me, yes or no. So can I say that, can I say that the phase difference is, the phase difference is always odd multiple of pi, instead of even multiple of pi, the phase difference all multiple of pi? Yes or no? Right, and when draw about odd multiple of pi, it will be 2n, either plus one, minus one, doesn't matter, right? Depends on from where you are starting n. We are starting n from 1, it is 2n minus 1. We are starting n from 0, it is 2n plus 1. Okay, so you can have any of the two. Okay, depending on from where n you started. Right? Okay, so when you talk about constructive and destructive, we know that the time difference we can calculate, the intensity will be maximum in constructive, right? The intensity will be minimum in destructive. This is the basic thing that we have studied. Okay, now when we talk about this average, right? Average is obviously the ratio of or the average of maximum and minimum, right? Okay, so these are the type of questions. These are the basic type of questions that is asked uh, uh, in 
wave optics, right? If they're not asking your YDSC. Anyone have any issue? Tell me, anyone have any issue in basic understanding of constructive and destructive? No? Tell me, Dilip, Uday? Abhinav, Abhishek, Abhin, Arshita, Kalpana. Okay. Step by step. First step, you should know what is basic, constructive, and destructive, right? And the definition will not change. The only thing that will change in interference and diffraction is the initial condition. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, let's talk about how to find this path difference because path difference is the key, right? Path difference is the key. Okay. Now, these are some examples. I hope all of you can go through these examples. These are the easy examples you can solve. So I'm not uh, spending time in these examples. I'll upload this. Please try to solve this. Okay. Right. Now, let's talk about YDSC. Let's talk about YDSC. When I'll discuss destructive now, Prashant, then you will understand because if you remember the basic formula, if you remember the basic formula of uh, constructive and destructive, dis, uh, sorry, diffraction, right? Diffraction, okay. You might remember that the, this is opposite, opposite of interference, yes or no? How many of you remember that? Instead of n lambda, we have odd multiple of lambda or by two, right? Instead of two and pi, we have opposite, right? So think about it now. How can it be opposite, right? The basic basic thing should be same now, right? Unless until the initial condition is different, until until unless there is some another issue. Otherwise, two waves which have same phase will, right? Have constructive interference, right? Or I'm not using the term interference. I'm just using the term superposition because the same thing happens over there also, right? Okay, so that's why I said the condition will be different. We will discuss that condition in diffraction. Okay, now let's try to understand this YDSC. Okay, so when we talk about this, we know that when we talk about YDSC, we have one source, this is a sodium lamp. Okay, now this source will create wave front, right? And now this, this wave front, this wave front will have two different points which will act as a two different source. Yes or no? The condition is these two, S1, S2 is compatibly larger. Okay, right? This is compatibly, right? Okay, now these two will create another wave front. Now think about this. These wave fronts will superimpose. Yes or no? They're superimposing, right? Right? Okay. Now, if you have, if you have a proper in NCRD or LC1 is given, if you have a proper uh, interference pattern, then you can just join these lines. You can just join these lines. So you can observe, right? You can observe that there will be a point at which, right? Most of the wave fronts are in same phase. So that will that point will be brighter, right? That point will be brighter. And in second case, right? It will be in opposite phase. phase. That will be darker. Right, that's why I can say that there will be different spots on the screen, white, right, or dark light, dark light, dark light. So I can say that because of that interference, just think about logically now, if intensity is increasing, right, that spot will be brighter, right? So that is a, that, that, uh, you can say when we observe these interference on screen, they are called as fringes, they are called as fringes. Okay, so depending on intensities, we have two fringes, bright fringe and dark fringe. Okay, right everyone? Tell me, right? Okay. Okay, and when you talk about the fringe width, so the distance between, okay, okay Kalpana, so I said, just think about it. Okay, now this picture is not very clear, but I'll just assume that you can understand from the uh, NCRT picture, okay, picture. So I can say that, see these points, see these points, right? See these points, right? So these points, to join these points, they're the consecutive superposition. I'm using the word superposition. I'm not using the word constructive and destructive because we don't know the phase difference yet, right? Now, this line, right, due to construct, sorry, due to superposition will give you, right, interference pattern, right? Interference pattern on this screen. That interference pattern might be bright or dark. It's basically light, right? 
uh, when you talk about uh, your laser show, right? When you put up a laser on your screen or your wall, right? You get you get a, a image or something like that. Now you get a light on your wall, right? Okay, so it's something like this. Now, depending on depending on the type of superposition, depending on it is constructive or destructive, right? We can have either either bright lights on this screen or the dark patch on the screen, right? They are called as fringes. Okay, when the intensity is more, when it is constructive interference, right? Then it is called as bright fringe, right? Or bright patch of light. Okay. Now, when intensity is less, intensity is minimum, it is destructive interference, then there'll be a dark spot, right? Which is called your dark fringe. Got it? Got it, Kalpana? Tell me. Got it? Now, see, for our convenience, it is showing like this rectangular patch, but it won't be rectangular. It will be a bit of circular with varying intensity. But again, right? We won't be worrying about that for now. Okay. Okay, so now think about it. When you talk about the position, when you talk about the position, right? What do you think? When you go from, when you grow away from this middle point, right? When you go away from the middle point, the intensity of light will increase or decrease? It should decrease, huh? right? It should decrease, yes, very good, right? Okay, very good. Now, when you talk about the condition, right? When you talk about the condition from bright fringe and dark fringe, okay, right? Yes, due to attraction is opposite, now that's why, okay, right? Now, think about condition. So, bright fringe, ask yourself, bright fringe is formed by constructive, tell me, interference, constructive interference, constructive superposition, yes or no? Yes or no? Right? Okay. So I can say that if path difference, if path difference is such a way that we can get constructive interference, if path difference is such a way that we can get constructive interference, then we will have what? Bright fringe. And if the path difference is such a way that we have destructive interference, then we will have a dark fringe. Yes or no? Tell me, yes or no? Right? Okay. Yes, very good. Now let's see. Let's see the condition for dark fringe and bright fringe. So this is the basic concept of IDSC. Now let's see. So till now we have understood the basic concept that we have to find path difference. That's first thing. Now path difference, after path difference, we have to find phase difference, right? Then we have to find the difference between the path of two consecutive interference pattern, which will give you fringe width. Right now, let's see this. Let's see this figure. I can say that, right? This is very clear that your delta x path difference is always S2P minus S1P, right? This is very clear, right? This is very clear. Now, how to calculate? How to calculate? So, we take some approximation. What approximation we take? We take that, okay? Suppose this is a point O, right? From O, we join a point, right? dotted line P and we assume that this angle, this angle is theta. Now, since, since the distance D is very small as compared to this capital D, this small D, which is distance between two slits is very small as compared to this D, this theta is also very small. This theta is also very small, right? Okay, yes or no, right? Now, this theta is almost equal to this theta. This theta is almost equal to this theta. Okay, now if you see triangle S L S one L S two, if you see the triangle S one L S two, right? Now since this is very small, I can assume that S P is equal to L P. I can assume S P is equal to L P. That's what we did in parallel rays also, now, right? In ray optics also. Now think about it. If this and this are equal, the path difference will be just this much, S two L. So I can see that. Using an approximation, it is just S2L. S2L. Right? Yes? Agree? Anyone have any issue in this? Tell me. No? Clear? Okay. Now, again, 
again in this triangle S, S1, L, S2, this is theta, this is S2L, right? So I'll use what? And S, S1, S2 is given. So S1, S2 is given and OC is given. I have to write what is given. S1, S2 given, which is small d, and OC is given, which is capital D. I have to calculate S2L, S2L, which is delta x, in terms of these two. Yes or no, in terms of these two, right? So I can say that, okay, tan theta, tan theta, right? And I have to get xn also, I have to get xn also, right? xn. So tan theta, let's think about tan theta. So what is tan theta in this case? In triangle, in triangle POC, POC, what is tan theta? Tan theta is xn by capital D, yes or no? Yes or no? X and by capital D, yes, very good. Now, in the smaller triangle, in the smaller triangle, S1, S2L, right? Instead of tan theta, I'll use what? I'll use sine theta. Sine theta is equal to what? Tell me. Sine theta is perpendicular by base, which is delta X, delta X by small d, yes or no? Yes or no? Okay, right? Now, since this theta is so small, I can say that tan theta is also equal to theta and the sine theta is also equal to theta. So I can relate these two, I can equate these two. So I can say that, okay, now this is, instead of xn, I prefer to write yn, okay? Because it is y axis now, I prefer to write yn. This is just what I have used to solve, right? So instead of this, I'll write yn, okay? So yn, because it is y axis, it's better to write yn, okay? So yn, by capital D is equal to delta X, delta X by small d. Makes sense? Right? Okay. Now, Yn is means nth, nth position fringe. Okay. Yn means nth position fringe because depends on delta X now. Right? Now, I hope all of you understood this. This is very basic. I hope all of you understood this. Yes. Agree. Now, this is very basic, very basic, right? Doesn't matter whatever is asked. Slit introduced, right? Or uh, it's kept inside your uh, water, right? Or half is filled with water. This will be the all, this, this basic expression will be same. The only thing that will change is delta x. Yes or no? Tell me. The only thing that will change is delta x now, right? For example, I'll just give you one basic example. Suppose here, I'll put a glass lab of thickness t. Just imagine, right? Just imagine, I put a glass lab in thickness t. Okay, right? Right? What will change? Tell me, what will change? Think about it, right? Yeah. Very basic. Think about it. What will change? Path difference will change. Now, now think about it. S1p, S1p, okay? We know that because of this, because of this, we will have an optical path difference. Yes or no? We will have an optical path difference, right? Which is, yes, mu t, right? This is mu t, okay? So I can say that, I can say that the difference, right? The difference will be what? So initially, if, if this was not there, the path was, the path of this is t. But now because of this, we will have mu t. So because of this, what is delta x? Because of this glass lab, what is delta x? Mu t minus t? Yes or no? Which is mu minus one into t, right? This is additional delta x. Yes or no, additional delta x. So instead of just S2L, we just have to use mu one t, mu minus one into t. Yes or no, tell me guys. Yes or no, right? So it is S2L plus this. As simple as that, in total delta x, you just have to add this much. So if you remember the basic concepts, right, it will be easier, okay? Now, if it is half submerged, then this total distance is multiplied by mu t. Yes or no? Suppose the upper half is submerged, right, in water. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sub subtract because it will be less now. Sorry, subtract because it is minus now, minus, right? Because S2p minus S1p. So I'm just saying add in S1P, 
Okay, I'm add, adding in S1P. Okay, Harsha? Right? Got it? Kalpana, Radhika, got this concept? Yes or no? Tell me. Varsha, Uday, Vishnu, Dilip, Triveni, Sinchana, Shreya, Shreya, everyone get, got this concept? Okay. Right? Now, we know that for constructive inference, this is the basic thing. Again, this is the basic thing, right? For constructive, what is delta x? Tell me, constructive, what is delta x? 2L, sorry, delta x, no, sorry, I'm just writing this. Delta x is n lambda, n lambda, yes or no? So can I say that yn, yn by capital D is equal to n lambda by small d, right? for constructive interference. So yn will be n capital D by small d into lambda. Yes or no, easy? Yes or no, tell me, easy? And delta yn, tell me, delta yn, right? Which is basically yn plus one minus yn will give me beta, which is your fringe width, Tell me, yes or no? Right? Yes or no? Yes, very good. Now, I hope everyone is clear on this. Everyone is clear on this? Okay? Now, in the same way, in the same way for destructive interference, in the same way for destructive interference, I can have the relationship between, right, delta x. Just change the delta x, okay? Right? So for bright fringe, we studied for bright fringe, it is uh, even multiple of, or just multiple of lambda. For dark fringe, it is odd multiple of lambda by two, right? Just use delta x as this. You will get the bright fringe and dark fringe. Now, if you see this, you see this, right? This is the fringe pattern. Fringe width is D lambda by D, capital D lambda by D, which is basically the delta yn, which is, the difference between consecutive, consecutive, right fringe or dark fringe, it will be same. Okay, now see this. Okay, depending, it will be, uh, it will give you that central with which central will be what? Bright fringe or dark fringe? Okay, right? Now suppose central is your, central is your bright fringe. Central is your bright fringe. Then it is always consecutive, right? Because when you talk about this lambda, right? So it will be like this now. Nah? or lambda by two, lambda by two, then we will have lambda, then we have three lambda by two, then we will have two lambda, right? So it is always consecutive, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright. Now, if we have central bright, then the first fringe, right? Here and here will be dark. So this is called as first dark fringe, okay? Got it, this is first dark fringe, right? Then after that, we'll have first bright fringe, then second dark, second bright. So if I'm talking about first dark, Whenever we talk about yn, we consider from this. We consider from this because we will have the same fringe, right? Above this as well as below this central position. Got it? Tell me, got it? Yes or no? Right? Okay. Right. Now, this is your, this is your linear fringe width. This is a linear fringe width. Now, this is just our assumption. This is just our assumption, right? Okay, this is a linear fringe width. What about angular fringe width? Tell me, what about angular fringe width? It is basically the angle, right? Angle between two fringe, no? Tell me, yes or no? Right? Yes, very good, right? So we know the basic relationship. What is the basic relationship? Theta is equal to L by R. Theta is equal to L by R, yes? As simple as that, theta is equal to L by R. No rocket science. L by R. So here L is beta, R is this capital D. So alpha is beta by capital D. This is your angular fringe width. Got it, everyone? Tell me, got it? Anyone have any issue in this? Anyone have any issue in this? Right? Now, just try to formulate the problem. Just try to imagine what kind of problem can be asked. Because if I talk about the basic concept of YDSC, this is it, right? This is it. The only thing that can be changed is again, insert slab, 
keep in water, right? Okay. Or change the phase, change the initial phase. If you talk about very higher concepts, we'll change the initial phase, but that won't happen anyways. Okay. So, yeah. So if you're asked, what is the distance of fifth fringe, fourth fringe, first fringe, right? You can calculate it. Tell me yes or no. Tell me yes or no. You can calculate guys, right? Yes. Okay. Let's try to solve some problems. Let's try to solve some problems. Okay. Okay. So we will just go through the problems. We won't be solving each and every problem. Okay. Now, anyone have any doubt? Anyone have any doubt? Any specific doubt in these concepts? Tell me. Anyone have any specific doubt in these concepts? Right? Which you couldn't get. Uh, then. No, 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 Prashant, right? Even if it's asked, it's easy. You will have to follow the same, same concepts, right? But Leloids and Fresnel won't be asked. Okay, right? We will get to know now. When you solve the previous equation, you'll get to know, okay? Right? Because see, even if it is Leloids and Fresnel, Right, the concept is same. The concept is same. The formula will be same on, only. The only thing is the construction, right? Okay, of creating two sources is different. Now nah, think about it. Yes or no, right? Yes or no? Okay. Okay, now I hope all of you rest. All of you studied this, gone through this. Okay, so let's see the problems. Uh, these are the easy problems. Okay, so in both NEET and JE, right? In both NEET and JE, the question that is asked from this chapter is very easy, especially in boats, right? They are mostly of boats level. Okay, now think about it. This problem, right? Think about this problem. What is being asked? Okay, just go through this problem, guys. Go through this problem. Okay, go through this problem. Okay. Yes, yes, Vishnu, that's what I said now, right? 
because this is what we discussed right if you see the previous case right so when you talk about the central if central is dark right then the first fringe will be bright yes or no tell me think about this if central is dark then first will be bright if central is bright then first will be dark okay right so it's first dark then first bright then second dark second bright but if it would be dark right then it will be first bright then first dark okay got it so this is one of the confusion for students right because usually ye confusion hota hai okay ki central kya le okay so i hope all of you understood this tell me all of you understood this yes yes central is always bright central is always bright unless until it is mentioned right unless until it is mentioned central is always bright okay in diffraction it will be opposite okay so ye ho gaya i hope all of you understood this right problems ban jayenge iske see both neat and j they don't ask very difficult problems right they ask basic problems only now when you talk about fresnel okay think about this right see you don't have to study just think right fresnel in this also what is happening tell me one source is divide the two source right with a prism that's it that's what happened right yes or no okay now the path difference when you talk about the path difference so this is this is suppose this is virtual because when you talk about light it is going from here to here so for this light it seems like the source is here and for this it seems like source is here right now if you talk about this point so from here right this is one path and this is another path yes or no and from this this is one and this is another right so if i'm talking about this this difference and this difference right the path covered by this and this will give rise to delta x yes or no right same s1 m and s1 m and s2 m so s1 m minus s2 m will give you delta x yes or no tell me yes or no right but anyways this is the basic concept you don't have to worry about this much you just have to understand right ki how images formed okay right theek hai dekho okay anyways this won't be asked don't worry Neat students, I'll just confirm once again. Okay, because neat me, कुछ भी आ सकता है, ठीक है. J में तो नहीं है. Neat का मैं confirm करवा आता हूँ. Second half में ना, तो we'll discuss that. Okay, right? Okay. Now, these are the type of questions. See, for everyone, at least remember the formulas for by uh, this uh, Fresnel also, right? नीट के लिए स्पेशली बट यूजली आजकल नीट एनसीआर बार कुछ देता नहीं है ठीक है बट स्टिल एक बार पढ़ लेना ओके सो आई होप ऑल इफ अंडरस्टूड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट यस और नो टेल मी गाइस यस और नो राइट रेज योर हैंड इफ यू अंडरस्टूड द कॉन्सेप्ट रेज योर हैंड ओके ना आफ्टर दिस आफ्टर दिस दे आर वेरियस वेरिएशन ऑफ दिस वाई डी एस विच इज शिफ्ट सॉरी यूज your glass lab so we have already discussed that it creates additional path difference in s1p which is mu minus 1t okay right so see the formula how formula will change see right 
So S two P is S one T plus mu one minus one into T, right? So the path difference is mu one minus one into T. Okay, additional path difference. Okay, got it. Yes or no? Right. Okay, very good. So just keep this in your mind. Just keep this in your mind. Okay. And this is just for central bright fringe, na? This is just for central fringe. For any other fringe, just put the value of n, and you'll get the answer, right? Just try to solve this example, guys. One question, depending on this. Question. Just try to solve this example, everyone. One point six, guys. I hope all of you understood that this is your additional path difference, right? It is your additional path difference. Yes or no? Because when you talk about this, this is just for central, okay? Yes or no? Tell me. Right. This is for central. Right. Okay. This is additional path difference. When you are asked to find path difference of nth fringe, right? Whatever delta x you will get, which is s two l, you have to add this into that. Okay. Got it, Swamik Manoj? Tell me. Got it, girls? Radhika? right this is the shift because when you talk about this this is for central fringe okay so every fringe will shift by this distance okay yes so the answer is very good 600 power minus 7 very good okay so these are the keys okay so that's it that's for ydsc yes or no tell me guys Okay, now think about it. Think about it. So we have a lots of problems in this sheet. I'll upload this sheet. Please go through the examples. Please go through all the examples and previous year. The next is diffraction, right? Next is diffraction. Now, can anyone tell me what is the basic difference between diffraction and interference? Can anyone tell me what is the basic difference between diffraction and interference? Everyone. Tell me. No, not in terms of formula, not in terms of construction, right? I'm talking about basic, basic definition, basic definition. I'm talking in terms of basic definition. Tell me in terms of basic definition. Think about it because. This is a question asked in uh, your boards, right? They are asked this kind of questions. Not even size of hole. What is the basic definition of diffraction? Tell me, what is the basic definition of diffraction? Prashant, Harsha, I am talking about the definition. What is the basic definition of diffraction? Yes, that's it, right? The basic definition is bending of light, right? Bending of light, okay. Yes or no? Tell me, right? Or deviation path when enters? No, not one medium to another medium, right? 
through the corners of any object yes or no yes or no that's what we studied na right this basic definition right bending of light around the corners that's it that's what we studied okay whereas interference is what interference is superposition of light that's the basic definition between diffraction and interference don't talk about just formula right think about what is happening okay right got it okay now so i can say that diffraction is bending of light right from the sharp edges of an opaque op object right or aperture got it yes or no from where we see this phenomena tell me where we see this phenomena how many of you have seen this phenomena in torch right in torch when you talk about the torch right light glow go like this yes or no yes or no i'm just talk about like the real life when we we have observed something like this tv yes right now what happens what happens or how it happens right before talk about what how it can ha happen right because again it is the same slate right if it is the same slate right one slate right instead of two slates i'm having only one slate so what is so peculiar about this slate so that it deviates think about it think about it don't you think the size of slit matters here tell me size of slit matters just go through the concept right so if i say if i say suppose okay this slit size is very less suppose this slit size is very less almost equal to the wavelength right almost equal to the wavelength think about it so whenever it whenever it try to pass through it this this light or because it's equal to wavelength it will try to squeeze out and try to find its way yes or no tell me yes or no right yes and because of that it might change its direction okay or have a path difference right so let's try to understand the concept of diffraction first we have to remember that this is a bending of light okay at the sharp edges right diffraction occur at this point and this point the sharp edges of any object okay now condition condition is the size of the obstacle or size of the aperture should be comparable to this wavelength of the light yes or no tell me yes or no right that's first condition okay okay very good so i'm not talking about the yeah i'm not talking about uh, the other definitions okay now diffraction occurs in every kind of wave it occurs in sound wave also na it occurs in sound wave also right we can see the diffraction in case of sound wave when uh, sound change its path when it has some obstacle okay right now when you talk about diffraction think about it. when you talk about diffraction so let's see this let's see this we have two type of diffraction right first is fresnel's diffraction second is von hofer's diffraction now let's try to understand what is these kind of diffraction now when you see this when you see this right this is your source this is a slit the size of slit is almost same as the size of the size of the wavelength what happens it will shift it will try to change its path it will try to deviate yes or no tell me yes or no tell me yes or no right now each yes each each point at this wave front will act as a source again act as a source right each point on this wave front will act as a source it will have also its wave front right so it will also superimpose it will also superimpose yes or no tell me yes or no right so it will also show your pattern right your fringe pattern right yes okay right so let's see what yeah how this happens so i hope all of you understood the construction this is a construction of fresnel diffraction this is a construction of von hofer's diffraction that's it right okay it's same as leloyd and fresnel and your uh, ydsc right the setup is different 
this is done by Fresner, this is done by Fraunhofer, as simple as that. Okay. Now, for us, we will generally study the basics of both. Okay. When you talk about Fresnel, right? Think about the points, right? When you talk about the Fresnel, okay. So in this case, screen as well as source, right? Yes. 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 So in Fresnel and Fraunhofer, right? Just go through the this table. Both source and screen are at finite distance from the diffractor, okay? Which is your slit, okay? Second. Instant ray and diffracted wave fronts are spherical or cylindrical. That's what we discussed, right? We saw that. But if we talk about Fraunhofer, they are at infinite distance. And we know that when it is at infinite distance, right? The wave front will be plane. The wave front will be plane. Okay, right? Now, in this, it is mirror or lens used for diffraction pattern. Here, lens is used for finding diffraction pattern. Central of diffraction pattern is sometimes bright and sometimes dark, depending on the size of diffractor depending on the size of the slit. Here, it is always bright, always bright. This is one difference that you have to remember. Okay, got it. Then the amplitude of wave coming from this is half, right, half. And here, right, so basically, uh, wait. Okay, sorry, sorry, this is something else, right? It is saying that amplitude from different half period zone are different, right? Here it is same. So this is, we will discuss, right? This is, we will discuss. This is just a theory for now, okay? Right, we won't be worrying about this. Now, let's think about Fraunhofer's diffraction. Let's try to find the path difference and all those things, okay? Right, now let's see this. Let's see this. If you see the setup, if you see the setup, what we have to do, we have to find the path difference, yes or no, tell me. That's what we know, right? That's what we know, yes or no. Now let's try to find the path difference. Let's try to find the path difference, right? In this, when you talk about the path difference, don't you think that this is same as YDSC? Tell me, don't you think this is the same as YDSC? Path difference, calculating path difference. I'm talking about calculating path difference. Okay, I'm not talking about the formula. I'm talking about the calculating the path difference. Okay, now if you see this, if you see this, we have L, L1 and L2. From here to here, from here to here, right? And here to here. Okay. So, after diffraction, okay. Now let's try to Group all of you can see this. It is visible enough, or should I increase the font? It's pick. Should I increase the size of the pick? Tell me, guys. Is it fine? Is it fine, guys? Tell me. Zoom. Okay, wait. I'll just try to zoom it. Is it better now? Tell me, is it better? Okay, so let's let's try to think. So we know that, okay, we know that we have to find path difference first. Okay, path difference. So what's the path difference over here? Tell me, AB is your slit width. AB is your slit, na? AB is your slit, right? Okay, so from here, right? A plane wave front is going, plane wave front from this point here from this point. Okay. Right. This is this. Path difference is this. So how to find path difference? Tell me. Use trigonometry, now same concept, use trigonometry. Since it is infinite, since it is at infinite distance, okay, right? So this, this A, B, this point, suppose it is D. We can use this point, A, B, this, and this is your path difference, 
in terms of theta we can calculate in terms of abm theta we can calculate yes or no tell me yes or no right yes very good same way yes manoj okay now so i can i can say that we know that for diffraction right for nth minima it is n lambda okay right so this is n lambda by a because this is given as a okay got it okay Just minimize this. Yeah. So see, these are the points. Just go through this. Just opposite of interference. Whatever we study interference, just suppose of that. For example, when we talk about, right? When we talk about maxima, okay, in interference it is at n lambda. Yes or no? But in diffraction it is minima at n lambda. Right, everyone? Right. So the formula will be same. The formula will be same. Okay, it will be just opposite. Right. Think about it. Yes or no? Yes or no? I'll explain. I'll explain, uh, Vishnu, uh, Prashant. Don't worry. Just go through this once. Go through this once. Okay, right. 